there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a watercolor of a crocodile just peeping out of the water a little bit. And uh, it's World Watercolor Month, so I thought it would be kind of fun maybe to follow along with some of the prompts this month over at the World Watercolor or Doodle Wash uh, blog and social media. So I will link to that if you want to learn more and uh, potentially take part in World Watercolor Month. Um, I don't think I've ever done every day for a month. I think maybe when it first came out I might have done the, the full month, but um, I always get busy in uh, in July. So I am hoping that I can, uh, I can, you know, see it through because it's fun. It's, I love doing those daily challenges. I can't do them all the time. I usually do like one a year. Um, but I do notice that my skills grow quite a bit when I do that. So I'm just sketching a crocodile head kind of poking out of the water. I did a colored pencil version of very similar to this um, a couple months ago and I got so many requests to do a tutorial on it. I just didn't feel like doing it again in colored pencil. So um, hopefully this watercolor will will suffice and maybe give you some ideas on how you might want to um, approach it in colored pencil. I got this, I think this is the ear, this little um, shape there. Got this like a little groove on the back. Then we get a little space and we get the nose kind of out of the water there so we can breathe. The end of the snout. This reminds you of Captain Hook. <laughs> and you, you know the, the crocodile trying to get Captain Hook and Peter Pan, for what I recall. I'm gonna draw some little ripples in here too. Gosh, I hope this is like, I hope this looks like something when I'm done because it's very abstract. All right, here goes nothing, guys. <laughs> really, right? I decided I would use um, a Gensai Tambi, uh, Gensai Tambi watercolor because I had them out. Uh, actually, I could use, you know what? I could use these new brushes that I got. Uh, they're actually a water brush. Um, give these a try. Why not? We're all we're all just kind of experimenting here. I probably should pre-spray these paints, but I haven't. Um, I really haven't used them that much recent recent years. So, well, they reactivate pretty well. That's nice. So I want my. I think I want my world watercolor projects to be kind of like loose and. A little on the faster side just to kind of make me work make me do it daily and I think if I if I tell myself I'm going to do like these hour-long pieces or two hour long pieces it'll be really easy just to kind of flake out on it so and um, I am NOT doing exactly what the reference photo is in case you're uh, in case you're checking that out it's going to differ because there's not a lot of ripples in the reference photo and I want a little bit of movement in the water. Not that a crocodile would make much movement because they're awfully sneaky. I understand. I like this brush though. I'm not really using it like a water brush though because I have my pots of water over there. Alright, I want to get the colors. Um, there's a lot of browns. Uh, but gosh, I really do kind of want to push the color a little bit, work a little uh, more imaginatively, especially, so, oh, you know what, I better sketch that reflection in a little bit, vaguely, just so I have an idea of placement. Of course, it's going to be more broken on mine because, um, because I've got ripples in the water, but I just wanted to make sure I had everything about where it needed to be. Ooh, that's a pretty color, isn't it? Gosh, I want to go right in. I'm going to put that right up in the eye while I'm at it. This is um, a sketchbook that my friend Rosie made me out of Arches watercolor. I'm going to grab a little yellow ochre. I was inspired to get the Genzai paints out again because um, I purchased the set of Sumi-E watercolor brushes or, or water brushes a little like uh, last week 
or two weeks, it was last week or two weeks ago, I guess it was last week on Amazon during the Prime Day, and I wanted to try them out. I thought that would be really fun to, to do that with them. Actually, I think I want to pull that out a little bit more. Let me go in. Let's see. I know I need some brown. But I'm going to mix it in with the green because I think just the brown on its own is going to be a little blah. And uh, actually, this green I'm using looks like a chrome oxide green. It's uh, this is my little swatch. I just swatch on regular watercolor paper. Um, see, it almost looks like a cross between a sap and a chrome oxide, which usually I don't like chrome oxide, but for this, uh, for this this uh beast i think it's going to work pretty well oh you know what i gotta remember the the reflection under the nose as well or under the end of the snout what do you call what would you call that do you call it a new nose or muzzle i don't know we don't have crocodiles up here thank goodness no offense to crocodiles but i like to swim I don't think I would find swimming as enjoyable if I had to contend with crocodiles. Luckily, not much of our nature can kill us up here. <laughs> Except for, like, you know, bears, but they usually don't bother people. I like using a big brush. I feel like it kind of really helps me be loose. Sometimes when you get a new brush, it can lose hairs, so I'm kind of expecting that to happen. All right, let's see. I'm gonna get a little purple in there too. This is kind of like a dioxazine violet sort of color. Gonna mix it in with the brown and mix it in with the blue. And add it in some of the shadow areas to liven it up a bit. I think I'll wait to do any of that on the face until it's dry. And I think I will probably switch to more one of my more normal brushes. Maybe just get a little bit of the color in there. Mm, I love what the colors are doing though. Right, I'm gonna go in with some more of the just blue on its own. I want to paint with these. Um, I think this is actually be great because I did get another set of travel brushes um, during Prime Day, and with World Watercolor Month, you just like you just you're you're creating so much art. Which the good thing is is you're creating a lot of art, so you don't worry about everything being great. You know, you're it's more of like you're doing you're doing quantity and not necessarily quality, but you also have a brand new fresh start every single day, so every painting does not have to be fantastic, you know what I mean? So, um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this yellow. Get some sunset colors in there. Um, so since every color, every every painting doesn't have to be fantastic, you can have that uh, that freedom. You have that freedom to succeed or to fail every single day. Oh, I don't know if I like this. I was seeing that in the reference photo, that colorway, but I don't know. I like, I, I do like this paint on this paper though. I don't think I've ever used the Genzai Tambi, Tambi paper on, um, I want to rhyme those words. I don't think I've ever used that on arches before and it kind of like gives it um, a bit of a granulating quality. The tin that I put my paints in, I use some poster putty. If you're wondering how these paints are here, because these paints come in like a cardboard box and they don't, I don't, I don't like that because there's no mixing area. So um, I took poster putty and put it down on the, under the, the pans and stuck them in this core watercolor tin. 
And it used to be that when you'd buy the core watercolors, they like you buy the like the starter sets of six, they would um, they would come in these big tins, and a lot of artists complained because they thought that it was just a, such a waste of space. But I loved it because I could put pan like half pans in there with magnets. I could cut up like the um, salus from uh, P Dr. Peach Martin, those they come up with these palettes that were for like their liquid inks. I could cut them down and fit them in there and put whatever I wanted. Um, or I could just store supplies in them. I loved the big tins, but they made them smaller because people complained about the size, uh, sadly. But luckily I had, um, I had I had three of those six, those the, all three, I bought all three of those um, introductory sets because I thought they were such a great value and such good quality. And I still think that. Um, but I really love those tins. I love that I have those tins. And if you get like the larger set, I think that it's, I think it's a such, um, let's have 24. You also get a big tin. I don't know. It's quite as big. It might just be a smidgen smaller, but you, you would get the big tin if you purchase that set. So that's a, that's a good value as well. So if you're thinking about investing in an artist grade line of paints and you like a paint that flows, it's a very flowy paint. I would highly recommend those. All right, I think what I'm going to do now is dry this and then we'll come back probably with a more standard watercolor brush and add some details. Okay, now we're going to start uh, by doing a wash on the face. I am switching to a uh, one of my Creative Mark Mimic brushes. This is a number 12, an 8 or higher I think is going to be fine for this. And uh, let's see what I have on my palette. I just want kind of like, uh, I think I'm going to start with kind of just a desaturated... Desaturated kind of brownish, greenish muck. And you got to make sure your paint is fairly wet so you can um, let me give it an overall coating. I'm just going to go over everything but the eyeball. I'm going over all the skin basically. everything. That brown, I should spray that because that brown is really, I should, I should spray the whole thing. Um, that brown is kind of sluggish. I want to drip in, I think I want to get some of those, um, I think I used a little orange. I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow ochre with the orange I used in the sun color, in the sunset color. A little bit of the brown. I'm basically making kind of like a burnt sienna color. I'm making a color that's very similar to that, but these are colors I've already used. I'm just going to dab that in on the back for some texture and some just some variation basically and it'll only spread where the paper is wet so it's only gonna it's only really gonna stay near the um, like near where you've already painted water also going to grab some yellow ochre on its own. I'm just going to get it dry off the pan. Um, I can show you how I'm loading that up. I'm just going to pick it up off the pan, just going to scrape off the extra, extra water. So you can see on the tip of my brush, it's, I don't know, if you, can you see that? You can see the paint on the tip of the brush. Yellow ochre is a more opaque color and I'm going to go in and put that right next to the eye. That warm color is going to help draw attention. And 
And now I know it looks a little crazy, but don't worry, we will, uh, we'll pull it through. We'll, we'll make it happen. <laughs> I'm going back in with some of that nice bright turquoisey blue color. And I am going to kind of uh, add some ripples. Add the ripples that I don't want to blend out, basically. By the way, we got extra teenagers in the house today, so there's probably going to be some uh, there's probably going to be some noises and some clumping around as usual. But that's all right. It's good to have them here, and then you know what they're up to, right? I'm actually going to drag a little bit of that ripple color in over the reflections there. I want these sharper reflections to kind of be in the um, focal depth range, so. Um, I want things around our little crocodile friend here to be in more crisp focus and then things can fade out behind and in front of it. Okay, now we're going to grab um, any of the colors basically that we've used so far. I'm just wiping off some extra, um, some of the extra, color, extra ah, water from my, from my brush. When I apply this, notice how I'm just kind of rocking my hand back and forth. I'm not going for like a mirror reflection because I put ripples in my water. I'm going for more of a um, more of like a uh, choppy. can grab some brown. If you're not sure where your shadows are gonna go on the um, on the crocodile and you want to wait to do the reflection, you can. I'm just doing this now because um, then I can uh, I can have something to do while I'm waiting for the rest of that to dry. All right, I think those reflections look okay. Um, I'm gonna dry this again to make sure the face is completely dry and then we'll go over with our final layer of details. I've zoomed in a little bit and I'll keep my mixing area to this part of the palette just so that you can definitely see it. And um, we're I'm gonna go in with my darks and actually I want to really make sure that um, that I can pull in the real, the real dark. So I'm actually gonna use black and I typically don't, but um, I think in this case, it's going to help me kind of get my message across quickly. And I'm going to add a little bit of that dark brown to that just to help it uh, harmonize with what I already have there. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that as well to make it harmonize with what's already there. And I've got a number two round. You can use whatever brush you're comfortable with. And I'm actually going to go right in with the pupil. That does look dark, doesn't it? Yikes. And maybe I've made a horrible mistake. But I kind of like, I love the look of pen and ink. Especially when I'm doing like World Watercolor Month because, you know, you can get all those details done with the ink. You have all that contrast. And then, uh, and then it just makes everything else. Like, uh, you know, fall, kind of fall into place. I got a little thick there, but that's all right. I'm gonna mix some of that in with that green gray color. Cause right now it does look out of place. I will give you that. Like, like you're probably there going, no, Lindsay, what are you doing? You always tell us to mix our black. Uh, there might be a, uh, and I might tell you that again before we're done. <laughs> I 
Maybe that little slice of separation between the animal and the water. a nostril. It's very defi- I don't know my crocodile anatomy. Just painting what I see. It's very weird because this is so much out of context. You know, you are literally taking this animal out of context when you paint a small portion like this. I'm sure somebody that's got pet crocodiles are going to be like, oh, that doesn't look anything like a crocodile. You've got that all wrong. I'm sure I do. <laughs> There's a little more of a, of a ridge. Um, and let's see. Some of that mixed brown that we made, that kind of burnt sienna color. And you're probably thinking, Lindsay, you're taking brown. You might as well just go and grab Deborah and Sienna. <laughs> I probably should. But I'm just going to grab some of that and put that under here. And add some dabs of that as well. I may add some details with colored pencil. The more you get done with the watercolor though, the quicker it'll be. The less you have to do, colored pencil is kind of slower medium, so the more you can get done with the watercolor, the better off you are. Okay, I'm just thinking uh, if I want to add any of that little bit of a darker color into the ripples. Definitely not as dark, because I don't want to, want there to be like a, a a clear difference to what is reflection and what is the uh, what is the actual animal. I don't think it's going to be confused, but you know. All right, let me just hit this really quick with the heat tool, and then we can go in with a little pencil. Okay, I've got a variety of pencils here, and uh, one thing I've noticed is that I think the eyeball's too small. I was worried about getting it too big because um, I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough room for the whole snap, but then I'm like, you know what, I think I could still be a little bit larger with that, so I'm using Goldenrod, I think. Yep, Goldenrod, and that's a fairly transparent pencil, but I am going to try to just push out the eye a little bit with that. And maybe minimize the pupil a little bit because that was looking a little, looking like a bit much. Now I'm going to take cream and I am going to uh, kind of come in with some of these details around here. And then on the outside of the eye, I'm going to add that kind of like, I don't know if you call it an eyelid or what, but it's kind of just the, that the textured skin kind of coming around the eye. Now this is a pretty rough paper. Arch, I think it's Arches Cold Press, um, but even Arches Cold Press is is quite rough, so... It's gonna wear down those pencils, especially Prismacolors, which is what I always have next to my desk in a little pencil rack. It's actually a spice rack. People ask me all the time, what is that rack by your desk? And it's actually a spice rack. 
um, but it works so well for colored pencils. All right, now I'm going to grab some of this. It looks like burnt sienna. Let me see. Burnt ochre is what they call it. I just look at the leads for the most part. Although I have to say, the Prismacolor barrels are pretty accurate. Prismacolor gets a lot of crap. I actually haven't really liked Prismacolor. Uh, and I've been, I've been using Prismacolor since I was a little kid, so... I think I'm going to re totally redo the pupil. And also got some flecks of green. I think I'm going to actually go with this almost fluorescent -y chartreuse, I believe it is. And kind of burnish some of those colors together with that. Um, back in with this kind of burnt sienna around the center. And I think I need a darker brown as well. Let me see. I'll sharpen it with my handheld. And here's another tip. Prism colors are finicky. So if you have one of these pencil sharpeners that has the two holes, sharpen it in the big hole and that way you'll get a very steep point and your pencil will not be as likely to break. I do that with my white pencils because the white pencils are very finicky. So, and plus this one's, I go through white pencils like water, so. Um, they're usually in a pencil extender and too short for me to sharpen in my um, in my electric pencil sharpener anyway. I'm going to be trying out a new electric pencil sharpener pretty soon because I get asked um, like what pencil re electric sharpener I recommend and mine was just a fluke that I happened to have this one um, because I just my exacto pencil sharpener electric sharpener just you know bit the dust and so I just bought another one and, it, and I, you know, didn't know anything about the brand. I was just at Ocean, Ocean State job lot and it was like seven bucks or something. So it was a, they, they sell like closeout things. So, you know, it was a good deal. And I'm like, okay, that's great. I'll, tr I'll give that a try. And it worked great. And then when I went to look what, look it up, because people kept asking me about it, it was, uh, because the brand is Foray and I didn't really, I'd never heard of that brand before. Well, turns out it's like a, either Office Max or Office Depot's like store brand. Um, but that model that I had was no longer being made. I don't know why they have to keep like discontinuing and recontinue and like making new thing. Like it's like you know if you make a toaster and it works, keep manufacturing the toaster. Why do you have to keep you know changing things? It just makes it difficult if like you like something and you want to buy it again after it dies, and you can't because they don't you don't you know you don't know it's comparable because they don't make it anymore. I just think it's so frustrating. Or maybe it wasn't very popular, but I don't see why it wouldn't be. It worked really well. It's still going. Um, I'm gonna go in now and get that pupil in there because I think that's going to really, really help. I'm just starting with a line in the center. I'm gonna build it, uh, I'm gonna open it slowly. Oh crap. All right, I did I did that with the electric. I'm gonna do that with, my, with the uh, short, the big hole in my pencil sharpener. Prismacolors have breakage issues. I'm being very impatient sharpening that, so I probably have not done it any favors. But when you have a less steep lead, um, a less pointy lead, it does give the pencil a little more support because you got more casing around it, so it's less likely to snap. Harder pencils don't do that. Like if I was using the, uh, the Pro Color, they wouldn't snap, but I might not be able to lay down as much pigment as I want. So I mean, you give a little, you get a little. So there's a there's a cost and a benefit for all of these products. So you just have to figure out what you're willing to deal with for the results you want. I'm willing to deal with some broken leads if I can get that um, that amount of lay down that I want. I actually kind of not like in the black, but uh, but it's there. It's down. We're gonna we're gonna roll with it. I got this ridge up there that's pretty dark and. I think this must be a nostril. I don't know. Maybe it's just a crevice. Oh man, I don't know. It's so weird taking this stuff out of context. But on the other hand, you don't get freaked out about drawing something because you're just seeing like a a very detailed smidgen of it. So it does kind of take some of that fear away, I think. Now I'm going to take some white and put some reflections in. I might not be able to get a bright enough reflection. I might have to go back in with a pen. But that's all right if I have to do that. That's not a big deal. It's a uh, we're into we're into mixed media land right now. Most of my stuff is mixed media these days.
the white would be just kind of like listens on the uh, on the wet um, on the wet skin. So you can help show off the texture of things. I'm turning my pencil to keep a sharp edge. You can hear a wooly chair upstairs. So many interesting noises. I'm going to use this dark green just a little bit more depth on the eyes. I like to have the, the burnished pencil on the eyes just because I feel like it, it brings out so much. And a little bit of this color here and there in the skin as well. The, the, uh, the texture of the paper can help you get that leathery texture you might be going for. And it makes sense that the, uh, the crocodile doesn't stand out too much because, you know, they're stealthy. You want them to be they would want to be more on the down low. Alright, did we get enough darks in there? I really want to pay attention around the eye just to make sure that looks good because that is where the focus goes. We always look at eyes. We want to see if others are watching us. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go over that and do the highlights with my pen because I think that will look better. Hopefully this one will work all right. And just kind of go and add the sparkles. Get a nice smooth line with the pen, whereas with the uh, uh, with a pencil it can get a little bit more choppy and grainy. You can also get those nice little stippled dots. This is, I think I'll look up 0.7 or 10, point, point 0.1 millimeter line pen. Just give me that Pagos watercolor set. Let's get a little sparkle here and there. If you get too much, you can uh, go over it with the, you can actually go over it with watercolor or color pencil. That nice glossy eyeball. And then, you know, you can also just kind of highlight to type, highlight to taste, just like you salt to taste or pepper to taste, you can highlight to taste. And you can also go back in and, like I feel like there should be a little bit more of a bump over that nose and nostril or whatever it is there. And you want a little more color in that ridge there. You blend it up with, ooh, you blend it up, oops, with that, huh? The sea foamy color. You can also go in with black pen if you want to, if you wanted to uh, 
sharpen anything up. Or if you had, like, I, I want high contrast where he comes out of the water, and sometimes I need white, and sometimes I need black. But there, I think I'm going to call that done. We have a crocodile for World Watercolor Month Day 1. I probably will post my daily attempts on my Instagram page. I don't know how many will make it to YouTube because I don't plan on recording all of them because I do like to sit outside in the summer and paint and that's probably what I'll be doing a lot for World Watercolor Month. So thanks so much. I will link uh, to what I used in the video description. And thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!